Thank you, Joel. Uh, good afternoon and good morning to everyone and uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, let me just put this few slides on the screen. Yeah, just to start, uh, I think the other speakers gave a, a pretty good introduction, uh, even though Dr. Nayak spoke mostly from an Indian perspective, I think it kind of applies uh, across the region. Uh, and I will try to speak a little bit uh, from a Sri Lankan perspective, which I think has very similar uh, issues and challenges to the other neighboring countries in the region, but also maybe touch a little bit on some of the current initiatives uh, going on in Sri Lanka that um, at both the national level and with uh, collaborations at the international and regional scale. Um, Sri Lanka obviously has, like the other countries in the region, a, a lot of challenges. Uh, as an island nation as well, we are, we are struggling and dealing with ecosystem degradation as a major issue. Uh, I think the speakers before pointed out very uh, correctly the impacts of climate change, uh, changes to uh, fishing grounds uh, and stocks and availability of resources, as well as degradation of ecosystems. Uh, my background working in coral reefs uh, brings me very close to this uh, because of the impacts of coral bleaching and uh, coral mortality due to uh, changes in sea surface temperature. Uh, we've had major bleaching events in 1998 and 2016, uh, smaller events in several other years, which have led to uh, up to a 95% loss of coral cover on uh, reefs in Sri Lanka, as well as in the region. Uh, I know in the Lakshadweep, Nic uh, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and in the Maldives as well. Um, and of course, anthropogenic impacts as well, because of the use of destructive fishing methods and also overfishing, particularly in coastal ecosystems, because of the nature of our fisheries being dependent on coastal fisheries and uh, a large number of small fishing units. The fishing effort is distributed amongst a large number of units that are kind of creating a more um, extensive fishery, more efficient fishery methods that uh, are linking. And again, this links with the whole blue economy concept and also the fact that actions around the world are impacting uh, local ecosystems and resources uh, everywhere. A uh, lot of Sri Lanka's recent uh, ecosystem degradation and uh, stock reduction in terms of anthropogenic impacts have been driven by export-oriented fisheries. So uh, changes in global markets and demands for certain products, um, particularly reef braised products, as well as pelagic species like sharks for shark, fin, uh, shark fins, shark liver oil, as well as manta ray, gill plates have driven extensive growth of certain fisheries beyond a sustainable level. The issue is not the fisheries themselves, but the scale and the nature or lack of management of it. Um, there is, we're also constrained by a lot of policy contradictions, which links to the next point of sectoral institutional approaches. There hasn't been kind of a more cohesive approach towards a national policy at a policy level and also at uh, an implementation and research and data gathering level, uh, we tend to be working in silos uh, at an institutional and individual level rather than feeding into, into a more national process. Uh, this, of course, leads to uh, significant data gaps, uh, sometimes for the absence of data, but also sometimes uh, the lack of coordination and communication, which makes it uh, end up that some of the data is not actively used for management decision making and of course this leads to economic losses both in terms of you know loss in income from fisheries and also in terms of under exploitation of certain resources that we can access um, as we heard earlier about uh, some of the new fisheries that they're developing in india these are options for sri lanka to also explore as we expand our fisheries and kind of diversify our fisheries and for Sri Lanka, as a, as a relatively small island state, tourism is a very important part of our economy, a very important part of our blue economy in terms of marine resources and ocean resources. Uh, balancing these uh, kind of things as well as ports and shipping, uh, which are key components of our economy and finding those balances is key and a challenge that we face. So the requirements come from a variety. We often, I work in research management, uh, resource management and, and research. Uh, we tend to be kind of often clumped together with conservationists. 
Uh, of course, there is a conservation interest here in terms of uh, globally significant species. Uh, Sri Lanka is assigned to most global uh, treaties, and we have several global obligations, uh, and we are working on that, but also for fisheries management. Uh, improving our stock management requires a lot of data and, uh, and information and better policy, as well as shipping industry. Um, and ideally, this we want to look at spatial planning. Uh, I spoke about competing sectors, and I think the challenge for Sri Lanka is basically better spatial planning of, of our seascape, which, which is currently, uh, I think, something we are looking at, but we have a long way to go. Uh, in terms of using this so that we can actually expand all these different sectors uh, more effectively uh, without kind of compromising the, the gains to be had from each sector. Fisheries and tourism tend to be the ones that are constantly at odds with each other. So these are things that we need to work on resolving. So some of the critical data, I think um, the presentation earlier went through a lot of this in detail for India, but this applies across the board, so I won't go into too much detail, but you know, a better resource inventory for Sri Lanka, and particularly long-term trends. We don't have really good temporal monitoring of our resources. Uh, this is kind of uh, an issue with financing and funding as well. Uh, we need to look at kind of as a solution, better financing mechanism to sustain long-term research rather than a more project intervention-based approach that seems to have permeated through Sri Lanka over the last few decades or maybe even up to 50 years. I think that is something where we are struggling with uh, in terms of long-term data. We do have kind of sporadic bits of data, but they tend to be isolated studies that rather than you know, building on research that we're doing. Uh, better fishery stock assessment, um, including fishing effort. Uh, again, we heard earlier about the issues with small-scale fisheries. This is uh, across the region and in Sri Lanka as well. Uh, we have a lot of uh, IUU fishing, which is illegal, unreported, and unregulated fisheries. Uh, this happens in the high seas fishery as well as the coastal fishery. Uh, we have a lot of small scale fishery landing sites from which data is not always uh, collected. And the data is also missing components of the catch that is discarded as bycatch or used in other ways. So interestingly, uh, around 2012, there was a historical stock assessment done uh, across the world. And for the Sri Lankan stock assessment, I was privileged to be part of that. And we found that, you know, we are underreporting our overall catches by about 70%. So you're, you're basically not accounting for about 70% of the actual catch in your fishery landing statistics. Uh, some of it because of poor data collection, sometimes because of issues like uh, discarded bycatch and other issues. So we need to look at improving our data collection to capture this and sometimes continuing to do these kinds of modeling um, efforts to kind of better understand the actual fishing effort and the actual impact on the resources. Uh, this links with ecosystem health, uh, critical ecosystems like coral reefs and seagrasses that are uh, important not just for biodiversity, but as a nursery and breeding grounds and also for coastal protection. Uh, we have major issues with uh, coastal erosion in areas where we have lost coast, uh, coral reefs. So kind of better ecosystem health and monitoring of these uh, oceanographic parameters and of course, socioeconomic data. This is another, another aspect that often gets neglected that we need to be tapping into. So I'll talk a little bit about ongoing initiatives. Um, some of these uh, my organization has had some involvement with, but these are all linked to larger national level uh, initiatives. Uh, we work closely with the Sri Lankan uh, Department of Fisheries and the Department of Wildlife Conservation, as well as the Marine Environmental Protection Authority. I think the chairperson of that is on the panel too today, so you probably hear more about uh, some of these initiatives going on in Sri Lanka, as well as other work that is happening in Sri Lanka. Um, uh, there, this is not a comprehensive list of everything, but just a little bit of a touch base of what kind of work is going on. Uh, on, a, on a smaller scale than, for example, India, but it is, it is the preliminary efforts, I think, of trying to build a more comprehensive data collection method and protocol for Sri Lanka. Uh, one of these is uh, efforts to conduct habitat mapping. Uh, this is some of the work that I have been personally involved with looking at mapping coral reefs and doing habitat classifications. We are looking at mapping all the coral reefs in Sri Lanka now, 
uh, together with the wildlife department uh, and the Ministry of Environment. Um, and this allows us to monitor change over time and impacts of coral bleaching, spatial planning for our marine protected area management, uh, which has so far not been based on this kind of data, but something that we want to build towards linking the research that's happening on the ground and kind of linking that with policy and decision making. This also takes use of or takes advantage of global initiatives. This is a, a screenshot of the Allen Coral Atlas. This is a global initiative to map all the uh, world's coral reefs, as well as associated ecosystems like seagrasses. Um, it's still in its early stages, but this process has begun. Uh, Sri Lanka is in the process of signing uh, a government level MOU with the uh, Vulcan Group, which is uh, supporting this globally financially. Um, and this will allow us to access satellite Im imagery, uh, remote sensing data, and build more accurate habitat maps for Sri Lanka. Uh, we've been working with the Australian Institute of Marine Science on a global effort to document uh, the populations of reef sharks and rays, so elasmobranchs, which are very vulnerable and targeted by fisheries. So we use uh, kind of uh, baited underwater cameras that we deploy underwater. This is a standardized methodology used around the world. Uh, there is one paper that recently came out in Nature and there's a few others coming out looking at uh, ass assessing the status of reef sharks and ray populations around the world. You can see the impacts of fisheries and the habitat preferences of these, and we can look at our conservation and management priorities based on this. This is just a, I just threw in a little bit of footage from that. Uh, I couldn't resist just to uh, liven up uh, an afternoon in the subcontinental time zone now, uh, so that just when we are getting tired, we can look at some sharks and uh, turtles swimming around as well. But uh, this is an important step. Since 2012, Sri Lanka has been actively working towards uh, establishing and improving our vessel monitoring system as part of our obligations to the IOTC, the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission. Uh, we have now uh, implemented VMS on most of our offshore fisheries fleet. We are now trying to implement this on some of our inshore uh, vessels fishing within our EZ as well. Um, and uh, this allows us to track uh, our fishing fleet, uh, monitor fishing effort, as well as reduce uh, IOU fishing. Um, again, um, Sri Lanka is uh, an active player in the IOTC, and the IOTC also showcases the global nature of our fisheries. Um, it's interesting, this is, event is linked with AFD. Uh, France as an individual state, and also through the European Union, is also a member of the IOTC. So the IOTC is not just Indian Ocean countries, but is actually a, a collaboration or uh, coming together of many nations which actually target and exploit the fishery stocks of the Indian Ocean. So it's not only the Indian Ocean nations that are fishing in the Indian Ocean, but it's all these other countries as well. So this requires a lot more global level collaboration in coming together in terms of our uh, resource management. Uh, there is work happening on satellite tagging in Sri Lanka, again, looking at some of our migratory species um, linked with uh, better managing them. Uh, oceanographic monitoring, this is something that uh, I think uh, Sri Lanka is only just starting. Uh, we are having efforts to establish uh, coral reef early warning systems called the cruise system, which is initiated by NOAA in the US, and they're establishing stations around the world. Um, we also link with uh, oceanographic monitoring uh, efforts around the world to collect better data to support our monitoring. And particularly with climate change, this allows us to kind of predict uh, changes over time and also forecast uh, potential changes to uh, proactively manage resources and spatial planning, including uh, access rights and fishery fishing grounds. Uh, and finally, I'll, I'll just finish with this. Um, in a digital era, we, this is where some of the, the work, the data, and the resources kind of come become more of a useful tool. Uh, the app below on the, on the bottom uh, picture is actually an app uh, that Blue Resources Trust is supporting the development of, uh, which is to basically identify individual sharks using uh, a photograph of a dried fin. Uh, as you are aware, the shark fin trade is a major, major component of, of wildlife trade. It comes under CITES. Several of these species are now listed under CITES Appendix 2, 
which allows limited trade, but a major challenge has been to identify species uh, once the fin is dried, it's because they are, they are traded as dried fins. And this is a challenge for customs officials uh, because there are some species that you can export or cannot export or permitted to export. So this is an app where you can feed in a photograph and kind of try and identify um, uh, the, the species, which will be used uh, around the world for customs officials. We've had several workshops here training customs officials on several aspects of this, as well as identification of other species to implement CITES better in Sri Lanka so that we can do this. Since you uh, mentioned seahorses in my introduction, this is also linked with seahorses. There are efforts to try and identify dried seahorses uh, using photographs because seahorses are also listed on CITES Appendix 2 for restricted trade with permit. So um, while the policy level decisions have taken place, there are these kind of obstacles and challenges of implementing these things. I think CITES is, is a very useful tool uh, because I mentioned earlier that Sri Lanka's resource exploitation has been heavily influenced by export markets, uh, so international trade. Uh, using tools like CITES uh, to manage trade uh, and also supporting and strengthening the implementation of that through tools like this can support um, you know, uh, resource management, conservation, on the ground level and this is also linking to kind of i mean i kind of mentioned this earlier in terms of sustainable financing a challenge for uh, resource management and research um like i mentioned we have a kind of a, a more initiative based approach uh, to financing this so kind of building more innovative funding mechanisms i think things are changing. There are a multitude of financial tools being used globally for uh, marine resource management and conservation. These include things like blue bonds, um, similar to green bonds, also private sector funding, uh, venture capital uh, kind of fundraising for and using kind of investment based funds uh, that support marine conservation and, and driving investment in more sustainable practices as a tool to supporting and financing research and through that conservation and resource management. So that's part of the future. There are initiatives going on globally. Uh, Sri Lanka is party to these discussions and initiatives, um, and I think is trying to take positive steps in this regard. And um, hopefully uh, we can work together with the other partners in the region and build on their existing partnerships and hopefully move forward into better resource management, not just in Sri Lanka, but throughout the South Asian region. And with that, I shall end it. Thank you. And this is just to end it, since I am a photographer, this is uh, actually a photograph of a coral reef where I work extensively, where most of my research is carried out on the east coast of Sri Lanka. This reef has been recently very heavily impacted by coral bleaching. Uh, caused by climate change, but has shown signs of recovering. And we are currently in the stage of uh, monitoring this as this has recently been declared as a marine sanctuary. And we're trying to support the management plan and uh, establishment of management network for this marine protected area. So thank you very much. <laughs>